All right, that was an annoying sound. This little piece of scrap aluminum came from my rowboat that I just converted into a bass boat. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link here so you can check it out. But I love taking little pieces of scrap of just about anything and turning them into lures. Today, we're gonna make a blade bait out of this piece of aluminum. And if you don't know what a blade bait is, let me show you a couple of photographs. Blade baits are essentially a plate of metal with some weight on it, usually uh, on the front and lower edge. It's a lure meant to be cranked. So it's kind of like a lipless crankbait. It usually has multiple holes uh, on top so you can tie on in different locations and get different kinds of action. Now there's not a whole lot of variety in shape, but there is a bit. So let me show you what I've drawn up for the shape that we're gonna use. Before we get into the details of the design, let me just say if you're new to the channel, my name is Franco. I'm a professional licensed engineer with a background in material sciences, a bit of aerospace and mechanical engineering, and even a little bit of yacht design. And I try to make videos where I'm using some of the principles of engineering and science in ways that anybody can use and make their own lures. Notice that the design I'm using has that flared tail. At first glance, you might think that that's really for aesthetics or style, but I don't think so. I think that it's there to create additional instability so that the lure, once it begins to wobble, which is gonna happen at some speed, it will want to continue to. If you remember the two lipless crankbaits I made and I showed you how the one with the fin on top had a wider wobble than the one with the little fin on the bottom. I think that this will fall into that same sort of category a fin causing greater movement. The lure is gonna sink and you want it to sink head first. You want the weight to be opposite of where you're towing it. These are tow points. That is gonna be the tail hook eye and the nose hook eye is gonna be up here. One subtle thing you'll need to notice, and I'm not sure it's gonna show in this drawing very well, the area above this little dash center line is greater than the area down here below it. And I think that will help with that movement. We'll get a bigger wobble, a little more of a thump. The weights are still a little bit of a question mark. I think I've got some ideas of how to add it, but the weights not only add the weight to create that counterbalance, but it also adds bulk so that it creates more turbulence on the trailing edge to get that movement going. The dimensions I've decided on are two and three quarters by about three quarters maximum height. So let me show you what I've drawn on a piece of paper. I've drawn essentially the same shape and you can even see down here where I sketched it just a little narrower so that that difference in areas uh, will be more pronounced. Before I get too far along, I really want to polish this ratty old piece of aluminum up. So I'm going to take uh, sandpaper starting with about 200, moving up to about 400, and then I'm going to polish it up and try to get it as shiny as I can before I cut it. Let's uh, clean it up. Looks like it's got a good shine. Let me clean myself up and let's see what we got. All right, can't be too unhappy with that. It's got a nice flash to it. All right, that's not too bad. It's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty doggone shiny. So that should make for a nice reflective lure. I'm gonna cut this angle off of it. Uh, it's just more than I need. And then we'll attach uh, the drawing to it and I really like to work with aluminum, thin aluminum like this when I'm cutting it. I like to work with it attached to a piece of wood. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so instead of using a piece of wood, I'm gonna use a piece of this 3 8 PVC board that I have laying around, again, from the same project. And I'm gonna, gonna glue this on here using this, uh, this sort of contact tape. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, I just polished it and now I'm gonna add glue to it. And you're right, it's gonna mean I'll have to clean it up again later, but it shouldn't be too bad. And I should be able to just add this right on there with the same technique. 
And what this does for you, it makes it much easier to hold onto the metal and it also makes it tougher for it to actually get distorted, bent or twisted or catch uh, while you're using the saw. All right, I've got everything marked. Let's start drilling. Okay, those were all the holes for tie-on locations and the uh, hook eyes, but now I need to drill bigger holes for the weights, and that's a quarter inch bit. All right, that should do it. Now it's time to cut the shape out. Hopefully, I won't do any damage while I'm doing it. That looks pretty close. Uh, now I can go to the sander and refine the shape just a little bit. All right, next step. All right, I'm pretty happy with that shape. So the next step is to pull it off the PVC, take the paper off and clean it up. And I'll come back to you when I've got it all cleaned up. All right, there it is, cleaned up. It's not perfect, but it still has a pretty doggone good flash to it. When you do this, uh, if you're using brass or aluminum, be sure that you sight down it and make sure you have it twisted it out of shape. It should be nice and flat. And that one is. So the next step is to put the weight in. Let me show you what I'm doing. We're using steel balls. These are quarter inch stainless steel balls. So, and to put these steel balls in, I'm just putting them into this little hole uh, and eyeballing, making sure they're pretty much centered. I'll put a tiny droplet of UV resin and then hit it with the UV light. All right, so they're all on. And you can see I've got them pretty much centered on the body. And while there's not a whole lot of glue on it right now, once I put a couple clear coats on it, it'll all kind of get encased. And the clear coat will get down into those grooves and harden and it'll never come apart. I've already wiped it down with some alcohol, so it should be good to go. All right. That should do it for the gold. Let's go to copper. And this is just a transparent brown uh, that has a lot of red in it. Uh, gives it a nice copper look. All right, let me uh, hit it with a blow dryer. And we'll move on to the next color. All right, I'm gonna try to put some scale effect on here but it's a little hard because the balls want to hold the uh, scale mesh up and not really up against the metal. So I'm going to have to kind of hold it by hand and just give it a little bit of a hint. It's not too bad. Let's do it on the other side. All right, that's got a pretty cool look to it. Let's uh, put in some a little bit sort of informal stripes on there. All 
All right, let's put a little bit of black on top, hopefully not too much. All right, now for a little bit of red. All right, well, that's enough for the color. I think we got plenty of color on it. Uh, now I'm gonna put some eyes on it, then I'll put a clear coat on it, put it in the UV chamber, and hopefully we've got enough time left that we'll be able to go down to the dock and see how it works in the water. All right, I went ahead and put it on a lure bow. All right, let's put some clear coat on it. This is the kind of project that uh, probably it's preferable to spray on a clear coat. And you can spray on UV uh, just by thinning it with denatured alcohol. I've done it. Uh, you just have to be patient and give it uh, a couple of coats. All right, let's put it in here and let it turn. And I'm going to let it turn for a little while without the lights on. So any bubbles that are in it will go ahead and pop and it'll self-level a little better. It's All right, it's not the same day. It's the next day. Got a little bit of sunshine. It's after work, so I might not have enough light even today. But I've got this out. Let me show you what it looks like. All we gotta do is put on some hooks. I'm gonna use some of these red hooks. I just think it'll look cool. All right, I'm ready to go out in the boat with it. Hopefully the batteries are charged up and I can run the trolling motor. I just wanna say, if you're enjoying these kind of videos, subscribe and drop me a like. It really does help the channel. All right, let's get out in the water. All right, here it is underwater. You can see what a fast wiggle it has. And it has a good flash, really good reflective undertones from that metal. slightly from behind and in half speed. Well, thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next Friday.